Andrew Tate and Sneeko, two figures often associated with the red pill ideology, have built their reputation on motivating young men to become their best selves. They claim to offer a pathway to strength, success, and dominance. But right now, these two influential figures are locked in one of the most intense beefs we've ever seen, and it's exposing some deep contradictions in their beliefs. The whole situation began on September 15, 2024, when Andrew Tate posted a series of tweets that ignited a firestorm of controversy. His first First tweet read, I'm half black and half white. Let me confirm something. Race is real. It's super real. I can literally turn my black side or white side on like choosing a different video game character depending on the situation. Whatever is more advantageous at the time. At first glance, this might seem like classic Andrew Tate. Honest, confrontational, and playing into his persona of being someone who refuses to bow to political correctness. Tate has always been outspoken against cancel culture, which has earned him both admiration and controversy. But what really grabbed everyone's attention was what followed. Tate continued by discussing how race has become politicized, claiming that the white race is being replaced in many countries in real time. He ended a tweet with this statement. White supremacists are totally right, and I'm not your enemy for pointing this out. I'm actually your brown friend. Now, Tate has always been known for his bold opinions, but this tweet took things to another level, sparking a mixed reaction as some people agreed while others disagreed with him. Enter Sneeko. Now, Sneeko is someone who has shared much of the same ideological ground with Tate over the years. They both preach the importance of masculinity, rejecting modern societal norms, and embracing self-discipline. But despite their overlapping philosophies, Sneeko fired back at Tate tweeting, this goes against the core fundamentals of Islam. God did not, in fact, choose any race as supreme. And if you believe so, you are Jewish. This is where the real tension started. Sneeko's criticism of Tate wasn't just about race, it was about religion. As a devout Muslim, Sneeko was framing Tate's worldview as incompatible with Islamic teachings. And this wasn't the first time Tate and Sneeko clashed over religion. During this ongoing feud, Tate also made it clear that he resented Sneeko for acting as if he was a better Muslim simply because he had visited more religious sites. Tate said, It isn't your job to criticize me about Islam. Just because you've visited more Muslim places does not mean you're a better Muslim than me. This jab by Tate revealed an important layer of this feud. While both claim to follow Islam, the way they approach their faith differs drastically. Tate seemed frustrated by what he saw as Sneeko using Islam as a tool to judge or outshine others, including himself. Islam. Firstly, it is not your job in Islam to criticize anybody. That's the first thing. Second thing, you question my faith and called me a Jew. You cannot be a passive aggressive little girl. I understand you're young. But if you talk that way to people, you're going to be responded to a certain way. And you do it all the time. It's not just me. It's just who you are. You're very like smart, smarmy, snarky. Also, just because you've been Saudi and I've been trapped on house arrest, you don't get to be a better Muslim than me and tell me how the world works either. Friend. On his stream, Sneeko responded to Tate saying, Islam is for everyone and it's not a competition. He thinks that I'm trying to one up him on Islam. I, I did not know that he thought this, that he thought that I was trying to be a better Muslim than him or trying to like, oh, look, I've been a Saudi or like trying to flex that as a card over him. Andrew, Islam is not a competition. Islam is for everyone. It's, it's for the best. It's for salvation. It's for this world. It's for this life. It's for the next life. Everything is a test has nothing to do with, I'm better, I've got a Saudi, like, I'm not trying to do that and I've never positioned myself like that. This response from Sneeko revealed something important. For Sneeko, Islam is not a personal branding opportunity or a competition. He sees it as a way of life that belongs to everyone, not just the most devout or outspoken figures. In some ways, this was a subtle jab at Tate, implying that perhaps Tate's loud persona was missing the core values of humility that he claims Islam promotes. This religious angle adds a whole new dimension to the beef. It's no longer just about red pill ideologies or fame. Now it's about who's living their truth more authentically. And for two men who pride themselves on being the most real, that's a major battleground. Andrew Tate then fired back saying, I stopped talking to you years ago for a reason. This short, sharp response from Tate implies that the issues between the two run much deeper than this latest argument. It's clear that there's been tension simmering under the surface for years and is now coming to a head. But instead of letting it go, Sneeko escalated the situation by posting a video where he argued that based on Tate's own logic, Tate should be deported from Romania. By Andrew's logic, white supremacists are totally right. She should be kicked out of Romania. You see how stupid that is? Like, why is Andrew trying to be a white supremacist now when he's black? Andrew Tate would be deported from Romania 
following white supremacist logic. Sneeko's argument here was a reversal of Tate's own rhetoric. By pointing out that Tate's mixed heritage could, by his own logic, lead to his deportation, Sneeko wasn't just poking fun. He was calling into question the consistency of Tate's entire worldview. And while some might have viewed this as a personal attack, others saw it as a legitimate criticism of Tate's increasingly controversial stances. But Sneeko didn't just focus on the personal. He went on to call for unity through faith in God, despite his growing disagreement with Tate. Obviously, those disagreements out very clearly, but don't spread hate towards anyone. I don't want to create any divisions. I don't want to see any of that infighting. I think infighting causes uh, a lot of distraction and it brings everybody's energy in the wrong places, especially when right now it's important that we are united about God, because I think that's the, that's the unifying common denominator that we have is that we believe in God. Now, this is where things get particularly interesting. Rather than just engaging in a back and forth spat, Sneeko began positioning himself as the more morally grounded figure. He shifted the conversation from a petty argument about race to something much larger, a conversation about faith, unity, and the real meaning of masculinity. But as usual, Andrew Tate wasn't about to let things cool off. In typical fashion, he took to Twitter again, posting, fine, 2,000 retweets, and I'll explain my tweet on an emergency meeting starting in 30 minutes on Rumble. And just like that, Tate turned the drama into content. By creating an emergency meeting on his Rumble stream, Tate not only addressed the controversy head-on, but also capitalized on it. Andrew Tate initially gained fame by speaking his mind on controversial topics, which drew both support and criticism. Although Tate is already a globally recognized figure, his ongoing feud with Sneeko has generated a similar mix of controversy and attention. On the stream, Tate didn't hold back. He called Sneeko passive-aggressive and took issue with Sneeko's Jewish comment, stating that it was too far. You questioned my faith and called me a Jew, so you were responded to in kind. You cannot be a passive-aggressive little girl. I understand you're young, but if you talk that way to people, you're going to be responded to a certain way. Tate then claimed that if he wanted to, he could end Sneeko's career right then and there. I'm not here to end Sneeko's career. I mean, I could. <laughs> I, I'm that guy. But I'm not here to do that to the guy. You know, he's young. He's young. He'll get it. This was a bold move. Tate, who often presents himself as the ultimate alpha male, was now flexing his power in a very real way. By saying he could end Sneeko's career, Tate wasn't just threatening him. He was positioning himself as the dominant figure in their dynamic. But it's worth noting that Tate then dialed it back, saying that he wouldn't do that because in his words, Sneeko was still young and would eventually get it. This moment is crucial. By choosing not to end Sneeko's career, Tate paints himself as the bigger man, someone who could destroy a rival but chooses not to. But there's also a hidden message here. Tate still sees Sneeko as a threat, or at least someone worth acknowledging. Otherwise, why respond at all? Tate then explained his controversial tweet further, reiterating that he wasn't a white supremacist because he was mixed race himself. You're not one of them, Andrew. I don't want to be. I'm a hybrid. I'm the best of the best. I don't want to be one of them. I'm just saying, yeah, I get it. You must be a dumbass to just because you have a little bit of melanin, you can't sit there and understand the white man's plight as all of their nations get overrun. Tate's explanation, however, didn't necessarily resolve the issue for everyone. While Tate tried to distance himself from the label of white supremacist, this topic remains highly one-sided and deeply controversial, especially when discussed in front of a wide audience. Despite his efforts, some people, including Sneeko, held onto their initial views, and this is where we see the real divide between Tate and Sneeko. In one of his streams, Sneeko brought forth an argument that directly challenges the modern materialistic view of masculinity, a view often portrayed by figures like Andrew Tate. For Sneeko, masculinity isn't defined by wealth, status, or material possessions like luxury cars or extravagant displays of power. He emphasized that true masculinity, in his opinion, is rooted in qualities like kindness, patience, and humility. These values represent a stark contrast contrast to the persona that Tate promotes, which often revolves around dominance, physical prowess, and financial success. If you want to keep the brand of Top G, you cannot hold on to this arrogance and pride that you so clearly have. And I'm not saying this is disrespect, but it's, it's become evident to a lot of people. Because real masculinity is not being boastful. Real masculinity is not being prideful. Real masculinity is not flashiness in cars and look how strong and rich I am. Money does
This moment in the discussion marks a significant turning point. Sneeko's viewpoint isn't just a casual remark, it challenges the very foundation of what Tate stands for. Tate's brand has long been built around the idea that a man's values come from his ability to project strength through material wealth, impressive cars, and even the physical form he displays. Sneeko, however, turns this on its head, suggesting that these outward markers of success are superficial. He pushes forward a narrative that real masculinity is found in a man's character, how he treats others, how he handles adversity and how he expresses humility and restraint in a world that often equates masculinity with boasting and bravado. For Sneeko, this is more than just a philosophical debate. By positioning humility, patience and kindness at the center of his definition of masculinity, he's presenting a counter-ideology. Sneeko then took to Twitter to reinforce his message with a thought-provoking tweet. Masculinity is not defined by flashy cars and oiled up muscles. Masculinity is not measured by money and bragging. Masculinity is being patient when you're agitated, being kind when you're angry, being charitable even when you're poor. Humility is the quality of a man. This tweet can be seen as Sneeko's direct rebuttal to everything Tate represents. While Tate's brand has always prided itself on its place of wealth, influence and the physical appearance of power, Sneeko is presenting a totally different vision of manhood. In Sneeko's view, real masculinity comes not from external achievements of this place of power, but from an internal sense of self-worth, spiritual fortitude and the way a man treats others especially when no one is watching. He essentially argues that while money and physical strength can fade, a man's humility and character are lasting marks of true strength. This tweet encapsulates a broader philosophical debate between the two influencers. For Tate, success and masculinity are tightly interwoven with outward symbols of status and dominance. But Sneeko's position paints a picture of masculinity that values the unseen, patience in the face of anger, kindness even when provoked, and charity when one has little to give. These are not just counterpoints to Tate's ideology, but a deeper fate-driven perspective that Sneeko believes defines what it truly means to be a man. Sneeko followed up this message with a powerful and unwavering statement, no one can end my career, you are going to have to kill me. He closed by emphasizing his ultimate belief that he fears no one but God. This, in many ways, sums up Sneeko's approach to the feud with Tate. Rather than getting caught up in a back and forth of dominance and reputation, Sneeko grounds his identity in faith, positioning himself as someone who is impervious to worldly threats. By stating that no man can end his career, he's rejecting the very power dynamics that often dominate these discussions. For him, the only higher authority is God. In contrast, Tate's worldview is built around the idea of control and dominance over others. But here, Sneeko flips that notion, suggesting that the real power lies in submission to a higher authority, not in the conquest of others.